Greetings, my name is Ed Ryans, Director of Turnaround Schools. Turnaround Schools as learning organizations is our collective vision. In all plans, actions, and interventions, we hear people asking why, what if, what do the data show? Turnaround Schools making a difference. There is a can-do spirit that flows from tangible progress and student engagement and student achievement. We never hear fatalism or resignation. We hear educators exuding confidence in their ability to make a difference through concerted team effort. Our task to dramatically increase student achievement in our persistently low achieving schools has been a challenging yet rewarding journey. To better understand our perspective of the work, you will hear from key stakeholders, principals, teachers, students, and parents around the following themes. The level of support received at each school, the impact of external partnerships, perceptions of the schools, professional practice, and support moving forward. I thank you for the opportunity to engage in the dialogue about this most important work, and I look forward to your continued support of our schools. I'm Paul Dunford. I'm with the Breakthrough Center at the Maryland State Department of Education. My primary responsibility is in leadership development and creating a pipeline of aspiring principals for turnaround work. We launched the Breakthrough Center at the Maryland State Department of Education. It was a significant organizational and operational shift, looking at high visibility, high priority, and integrated public and private services for our lowest achieving schools. We interface with Maryland State Department of Ed and Prince George's County Public Schools. Our emphasis is on building capacity so that we not only achieve turnaround, but we sustain turnaround. Our relationship is personalized and customized and is all around the work that's necessary to support long-term change in our turnaround schools. I received a lot of academic support because when I first came here, I wasn't all that good in, good in math and reading and all the other core choices. But now, cause, since my teachers helped me and guided me along the way, I'm better at them. Like math is my strongest subject. It used to be my weakest, but now it's my strongest. Last year, we became a turnaround school and we received the additional um, resources in terms of money. Um, we also received additional positions, which has really helped with um, character education. It's helped with behavior. Um, also the assistance of the uh, coaches with the academics. Particularly being in the math department, um, I received the supports of collaborative planning. Um, so that's when our team of math teachers comes together every other day. Um, and we work with our instructional coach as well as um, our academic dean, Mr. Nance. Um, and we sit down as a team and we go through uh, and learn different ways to teach math. So where, how you engage the students more, how we can get them doing more hands-on things, how do you turn over a classroom to a group of 30 students. Uh, and really give them the confidence to make the class in their own. Uh, lo primero y con lo que estoy muy contenta es porque aquí la escuela tiene un intérprete que es la señora Rosado. Por eso estoy feliz porque um, los seis años anteriores que mi hijo estuvo en elemental nunca hubo un intérprete, lo cual creo que es muy importante y hace muchísima falta para nosotros los hispanos. She said that the first thing that she is um, grateful for is that in this school we have an interpreter. She says that um, the first uh, six years of her child's education, um, there was no interpreter available. And so um, this uh, is very important for the Hispanic parents. Some of the main supports that we've received is, uh, of course, working very closely with the turnaround office. I love the fact that I can pick up the phone and call Dr. Ryan's at any time and be able to get that real personal um, support, especially you know, with the things that go on at our school. Uh, we also received a lot of instructional support from the turnaround office with the instructional coaches that they have, and the whole turnaround office has been incredible with you know grants and and helping us work through things with the state. I mean, it's just been a terrific support. We've also received a lot of support around staffing. Uh, the certain positions like the student advocates have been invaluable this year with the relationships that they've been able to build with our kings and queens. Uh, the positive behavior intervention person, our, our, our psychologist, uh, social worker, all those persons are just critical to what we do here at our school. The impact is that um, we have a lot of outside entities that come in, um, mentoring programs, male and female, that basically 
there, it's actually helping to some of the students because we have a lot of inner city kids who really need the extra help. Also, you know, we deal with a whole bunch of single parents who need the extra help. So a lot of the partnerships that, that come in really help out with a lot of the learning and help the tools to help some of the kids to grow to become better citizens. We have a partnership with Mosaica in which they come in and they are in charge of, a, of our collaborative planning, planning process in which they use CFIP. Um, something that is solely done by them in regards to preparing our teachers for looking at their data, for analyzing their data, in order to make um, better instructional practices, in order to look at um, deficiencies in their area of expertise, whatever discipline that they in fact teach, and to improve upon those qualities. Um, and it's a partnership that's growing. It's, it's definitely something that we have to revisit and maybe retweak from time to time, but it's something that's definitely um, can be impactful if utilized in the correct manner. Before this, I certainly had vague ideas of what I wanted to see and, and hopes and dreams for my classroom, but the, so, the supports have made those hopes and dreams, um, you know, start to come out in, in actual practice. And so no longer do they just exist as an idea for what a lesson might look like, but we get to talk about the best way to execute that lesson, how to implement it, what really will students need, what kind of furthering questions we're going to have to ask, and so it, it, it takes these more abstract ideas we might all have on our own and adds uh, a real degree of practicality and, and makes it much more tangible and helps us improve our practice in the classroom. I didn't know that we were going to do more stuff to make the classes more fun and add another mod so we can get our homework done and a whole bunch of new teachers. I didn't know that was going to happen. So actually it is very different and last year everybody used to fight and stuff and now it's like nobody fights at all. It's different because the teachers really do care. They want to teach us. They could be out doing other things but they choose to teach us. They want to help the youth learn, grow and prosper. So. And then we have a better environment at this school. We're safer. Both of my daughters uh, went to Cora Rice for the elementary school year. So coming over here, I think it's the older kids and kind of the environment. I thought we were going to encounter a lot of um, behavioral issues, disruptive students, um, issues in the community and things of that nature. Um, I think once they got inside, it, it was almost like a bubble. It was like what was going on the outside wasn't necessarily affecting the inside much different because the first year that our previous shows went, it was really good. They had a really good principal in the middle of the school year. He was taken somewhere else. The next year, things kind of went down, but thank God she had a good foundation. So we were a bit skeptical about sending our son Brandon here, but we said we would give it a chance, see how it works. Turned out when we came here for the orientation, we were like, yes. This is going to be a good thing, a good environment. Uh, the teachers were into, you can tell they were into the kids and were into the education piece of helping the kids, and that's what we liked. So just from the beginning, when we came to the orientation, we knew he was going to be taken care of. One of the things I always remember is working with somebody from the Maryland State Department, and I was teaching fractions. And I've always learned fractions one way, like, oh, we just simply change this into an improper fraction and tell the students how to add and subtract from here. And she kind of challenged and pushed me and saying, you know, there's always more than one way to learn uh, a content. And so having that kind of like impact in my way of thinking, I always have to think outside the box when I'm teaching. I can't necessarily say, oh, this is the way I learned or this is the way they're supposed to learn in the book. I have to think and see what is best for my students in terms of different real applications they have or different strategies to use and it's probably impacted most of my thinking about how I go about teaching a lesson. Our teaching continue to change and we continue to improve on data-driven instruction focusing on students achievement through the data analysis using appropriate instructional material and focus on the planning and delivery of instruction. We push our teachers to become teacher leaders. So they're constantly teaching, they're constantly learning. So it becomes a joy just to walk in. We've seen a lot of growth, in, in particular some of our MSMART teachers that came in with us the first year and how they've grown and become truly educators.
if I could choose one thing that is needed in order for us to sustain the work, it, it, it would be priority staffing. Um, no matter what we think, a principal and administrators, community support, parent partners, no, those things are very important to any school, but for the schools that have been chronically and persistently low achieving, you have got to have the best teacher sitting in front of the students that need it the most. I think it's just really important that you get um, turnaround principals, executive cabinets, school board members all in the same room at least once a year to really talk about where we're going, where we're trying to go, what we need to all be on the same page, just to have a dialogue. And I think through that dialogue, then just a, a litany of ideals come and then people become more creative. Um, so I just think that that's what we need. We need access, dialogue, communication to keep the process and progress going.